Dr. Rodriguez, it's wonderful for us to be able to spend some time talking with you. I know you've been doing some really, really important work with Isabella. Thank you. I'm glad to be here today. And may we go by first names, Hilda? Hilda. Thank you. And Anna Sanchez, Ms. Sanchez, thank you very much for joining us. It's not often that we get to have the perspective of someone who's on the front lines, the case manager, and I know you know Isabella very well. Yes, I'm happy to be here today as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Dr. Gomez, Michael, Dr. Chang, Rocio, as therapists and colleagues of Dr. Rodriguez, it's wonderful to have you here and your support means a lot. So tell us about your work with Isabella and let's see how we can be of any help to you. I appreciate it. Um, now Isabella is 18 years old, so um, I'm working with her as a, for the psychotherapy process um, after that Dr. Chan uh, could not continue offer her services. And Isabella are doing great in the therapy process until that she witnessed uh, um, a fatal shooting incident. Mm. Um, there, uh, Isabella, was walking on the street with a uh, really close friend, Marta, and uh, they both uh, live with Trevor. And she was in relationship, Isabella was continue with relationship with Trevor, and he was continue exploiting her also. Mm. So um, Isabella and Marta were really, really close. And Marta, um, they have a kind of sisterhood. Mm. They, uh, she was very, very supportive. They have a really meaningful uh, relationship. So um, after this incident, Isabella uh, started, you know, uh, she need to left the, the scenes because uh, she need to save her life and she was running mm. and she was running to the hospital at the center city. So at the hospital, um, after the physical evaluation and they called to the shelter because mm. she could not, she should not to go back with Trevor, absolutely. Mm. So at the shelter, Anna, call me because Isabella have not been able to sleep or eating for the last week. Now, um, Isabella is presenting um, acute symptoms of PTSD. Mm. Um, she's experienced uh, trauma reminders, a lot of them, nightmares as well, uh, triggers. Mm. She is also in a very complicated grieving process because this situation means that Marta, you know, she lost another important and significant person in her life. Mm. But he, um, she also lost Trevor. I'm aware that maybe, maybe not, Trevor is not uh, a good partner to her, but he was the only one supportive and someone to care Isabella for a long time. Now, um, she don't have a relationship with her mother mm. and with no other family members, right, Anna? Yes, that is correct. So, um, it's, she's, you know, and, and through in a, very complicated grieving process too. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to work with and a lot to, mm -hmm. a lot for Isabella to be working on. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we, maybe Anna could tell us, are there, are there other things? I mean, Dr. Rodriguez has given us a really complete summary, but what do you know about Isabella? How have you gotten to know her and how have things changed since this incident? Sure, so she has been at the safe house uh, where I case manage for a little over two months. Mm. Um, we do see evidence of the triggers and um, we've been having difficulty with managing her at night in particular, um, where I think she's trying to avoid 
sleeping and avoid having such nightmares. So she would just try to stay up. And we have the house rules and we have um, sort of norms we have to maintain among um, all members at the home. So um, it's been a little difficult trying to sort of manage um, that, especially at night. But um, in my role in engaging with Isabella is to s almost uh, think of her safety and security first and prioritize that. Um, so we are trying to go down the list of any documentations that she has with her, but also documentation she's going to need to obtain um, so that she is eligible to receive a housing voucher or any other services that's going to um, allow her to move on from the shelter um, and be on her own. But we have a long way to go. Um, we know that she's been in therapy, have assisted in even transporting her. Um, but we are thinking of two things at the same time, her well-being as, and also her um, ability to sort of think ahead and where she can have a stable life. Could I just ask Dr. Chang, since you, you were seeing Isabella in therapy, what, what do you know about this, and, or from what you know of Isabella, what, what are your thoughts about the situation she's in now, having witnessed this really terrible yeah. incident and have, having this loss upon loss, as Dr. Mm -hmm. Rodriguez is saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, you know, Definitely, I remember Isabella um, first when I started seeing her struggling, right? Struggling to find her own space in this world, trying to, you know, as, as an adolescent, she definitely was looking for attention and, and feeling wanted. And, um, and then Trevor came into, into her life uh, when she was younger, and that was a little bit difficult for her to understand. Um, or to make sure that she, she was well aware about differentiating between a healthy relationship versus a toxic one. And, you know, we know how the rooming starts very early, and, um, and that was very challenging for Isabella to, to go through and also for mom to figure out what she could do. Um, during the time that we met, she made significant progress. She's a very resilient yeah. young adult. She is. Now, um, a woman, and I remember she having some goals and um, figuring things out um, with the support that she had at the time from her school. She loved to, she was super creative and um, she loved to um, use different resources that her community was providing at the time. Um, by the time that we left it, she was in a very good space by the time that she uh, finished therapy with me. And I, I feel so sad to hear about this tragedy incident. Um, okay. And at the same time, I think that, um, that Isabella can really um, be reminded of how far she has come. And Hilda, I'm so happy that she's with you because I'm pretty, and Anna, it seems that, you know, the shelter is understanding her and is providing um, the support that she needs at this time. And I'm, I'm actually hopeful, Julian, to mm. see, you know, that unfortunately she's going through a super extreme, um, a stressful situation. But I'm hopeful that she has now people in the system that are understanding her and that uh, she can move forward from it. Mm. Rocio, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, do you know if she was export, uh, exposed before this incident to a gun situation or something like this? Not that I... I don't recall that. Okay. So maybe this was probably the first time that was okay. actually, you know, that close. Mm -hmm. Maybe community violence. Mm -hmm. I would expect that that probably was part of um, some of the exposure, but nothing that she brought in to treatment when I was seeing okay. her. Thank you. But mm -hmm. that's a very important point because if she had 
experienced even indirectly violence in the community, maybe not right there, but knowing about it, peers, other, either family members. And Michael, you, you've worked with a lot of young people who have had to live with community violence or violence yeah. in the school and community day to day. Yeah. What, what, does that, what does that do in terms of kind of priming them to be on the kind of ready to react and with the vigilance or survival reaction? That's a good question, Julian. I, um, paradoxically, I'm more concerned when a kid comes in flat and numbed out or zombied out, as a lot of my trainees say, and from actually what you're saying, and it's not, it doesn't sound like Isabella's doing that, at least at night, but I, but I still have seen kids and teens and young adults who they'll have, you know, tons of nightmares. You see this with veterans too, they'll have tons of nightmares and they'll be like, I'm fine in the morning, everything's okay, the symptoms are not showing up in the session with, that you're having with them, so they, they got a good window to minimize and then that makes our treatment protocol harder. Uh, also makes it harder to, to you know give advice to the question you asked earlier, Anna, because uh, they have no motivation. So, it so you see the spectrum from like numb to super hyper aroused um, all the time. And actually, my kind of question I have for you, Hilda, is were was the presentation for Isabella pretty flat, pretty normal, minimizing, pretty dysregulated? Um, I know it's a pretty fresh uh, incident. I'm just wondering if how kind of what was the vibe you got in session like when you talked to her. At the beginning uh, process in the section, she have a, a you know a kind of hesitation to talk to me about the nightmares. Mm -hmm. The nightmares was like her starting point to to share something about the incident with me. She never talked after after this um, uh, session. She never talked to me about the incident. So uh, now, after um, after I want to say that the diary, the journal, she's continued to written in the journal, and today she could to you know share with me what are uh, what she are uh, what she's written there. It's helped to her to share with me what's going on in her mind and you know her thoughts but absolutely also the nightmares when i ask her if she shared the information about the nightmares with someone else she told me no mm -hmm. but absolutely um, the the shelter staff including anna were aware about the situation because she could not sleep mm -hmm. so um so I think that something was happened today different in that way. I think that today she, she was really um, more open with me in section to talk about the, the incident, the situation. Before today, maybe I can say no. Maybe she was more in the other way, more that I'm good, everything is okay, nothing important is happening at shelter. So today was the first time that she was able to talk with me about this. Did she get dysregulated during session at any point? Today? Yeah. Yes. Oh, how mm. bad was it? Mm. Um, she, was, uh, she was triggered in the session oh. by the uh, loud sound outside the office. So, and she told me that it was the first time that she had experienced a trigger. So, um, at this moment, um, she, it was hard to, to her. It was really, really hard, Michael. Uh, she was shaking a lot. She was going to the floor, you know, intent to protect herself okay. so sounds like a flashback yes yeah. mm. yes it was so she was reliving some of that incident mm -hmm. did she even say something to suggest that yes because at one moment she told me like where is he who oh. Trevor oh. and she was really hyper vigilance mm. she was you know expecting that something danger 
could happen us uh, during the session. So as it had happened in real life. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so she was dissociative to a certain extent. Was she able to actually know that you were still there and who you were? At first, I was thinking in that way. So I was a little bit like, oh no, she maybe it's you know dissociating herself. But I think that I could handle this and reconnect her to you know support her in order to reconnect with her body, with me, with the present moment. Mm -hmm. So um, how did but, you do that? Oh, at first, uh, sometimes we switch to Spanish language mm. because sometimes, you know, as a research suggests, sometimes when we are in this kind of moment, really intensive, our brain is going back to our native language. So sometimes she could express herself in Spanish. I, you know, and, and I answer in Spanish. So we have like a kind of Spanish grounding moment. Um, at this moment, I was trying everything that I have. Uh, breathing exercises mm. in Spanish. Mm. Uh, I was calling her by her name, you know, trying to connect with her uh, request to, okay, if you want, look at me, please you know, um, validating her and I'm also explaining that I'm familiar with the sound and, and explain her that it's sound, I know a squeaky sound, but it's the net, it's the door at the next room of the mm -hmm. office. So also um, I have a basket with some sensory material because mm -hmm. she was really shaking. Mm -hmm. And I see that the breathing exercise was not, does not work in the way that I expected. What did you do that worked? So the breathing was something, but there was, but then the sensory uh, objects, now tell us, tell us more about that. And should the, should the shelter have that sort of stuff there available? Mm -hmm. Yes. Today, um, today I, I was exposed to her to this kind of materials and she really enjoyed it. She loved the a kind of stress ball filled with like a, some jelly, and also she loved the play doh. Hmm. So um, it was great, and um, I was give them to her in order to keep, you know, to in the shelter or in your backpack and everything. But also, I today I, I want to transmit it to her that sometimes we need to have like a variety of options because not always the same strategy works. So I was trying to explain her like, okay, Isabella, you have, you know, more than one option. Sometimes this is a kind of try and error. So sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. So um, I was exposed her to this kind of sensory material we also work with the breathing exercise. She's pretty, pretty good doing this. So maybe count in Spanish, help her to connect more with the exercise because at first she demonstrated a little bit hesitation. Oh, the breathing exercise is not working right now or something like this. But then at the at very intense moment, she could regulate herself and, um, you know, spontaneous, she start to breathing and trying to take in a deep breathing. So it was my signal to, okay, we will go in that way and I will incorporate other strategies. Also, I noticed that her, it's something like um, she wanted to take her hands like this, you know, and sometimes she put her hands like this. So I was trying to explain her that this is something, something that could help also for the grounding moment, because, you know, I trying to get her an, a new meaning for this. 
So I'm trying to say, no, you could reconnect with yourself, with your body. So you could try to this, if you are outside and you have nothing to, you Maybe know. there are no stress balls available. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So mm -hmm. you could also use your body to, you know, to reconnect with your body. Hilda, as you were doing that, you, you were illustrating that so beautifully to us. Were you doing the same when you were talking with Isabella? Were you actually doing this with your hands as a kind of a, a way to join with her? Yes, um, sometimes mm. during the, the moment, maybe the, the peak of the moment, uh, I join my hands and I, I hold her, her hands too. Mm. So it it's works too because she need this kind of connection mm -hmm. with others. And in Spanish, she told me like, ya no puedo más. So also I was trying to remind her that she are not al she's not alone because she, um, we are, you know, here to support her. Mm -hmm. So this is the other thing that I was trying to explain to Isabella. So if you could not by yourself, you could ask for support. You could go to Anna or the, the other staff at the shelter and ask for support. And this is something that we were talking about during the session today. Too. How did she feel about that? Because I, young people who have been through a lot often are reluctant to ask for help. What was her reaction? At first, uh, she told me that, no, I could not go in that way because, and, and I asked her, why? Why do you think in that way? And it says me something like, I don't want to bother uh, anyone. Yeah. So um, I used the, the strategy to put her in the other side. So thinking if one of your friends comes to you to request your support. What will you say too? And she told me immediately, I will be there for my friend. And I was trying to reinforce her that Anna and me are in the same way as you. I want to be there to support you. She's very smart. Did she get that? Mm -hmm. Initially, she's saying, oh, I would be a bother. And then you say, wait a minute, but if you would be there for your friends and they wouldn't think it was a bother, mm -hmm. would that potentially be true for you if you needed that? Mm -hmm. And she got it. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of something that a therapist told me about a, a strategy very similar. In fact, I think it might have been Dr. Gomez. Only he was talking about how he helped a client or has helped clients to think about what would they, at, at times where they felt that they were together, that they had their life in a good place, what would they say to themselves now when they're going through a really, really difficult time? In this case, what you did was you helped her think, what, what would you do and put yourself in the place of the person who is giving the help mm -hmm. rather than thinking of yourself as just someone who's taking? Mm -hmm. I love that. Take that different perspective and then begin to see that maybe you can do something you think or you thought you couldn't do. And I also just want, I just want to highlight one other thing you said. In the midst of all of this, and I notice you've been doing it with all of us too, I'm guessing that you probably never stopped making eye contact with Isabella. Exactly, yeah. And you even helped her make eye contact with mm -hmm. you at times where she was kind of going in, mm -hmm. shutting down. I, Anna, I, I would never underestimate that. Have you noticed that when Isabella is sort of face to face, that, that she just really seems to lock in and makes that connection? Yes, which I think um, is a good sign. <laughs> you know, um, oftentimes we may come across someone who has absolutely no eye contact and it's a little bit difficult to engage because um, you're just, just not sure if they're present, you know. Um, Isabella, sh you know, she does show promise, and we do believe she's resilient, and we want to just make sure that we connect her 
with all the resources possible to have a um, well-rounded life ahead of her. Um, we know it's a long road ahead, um, you know, in the state of what's happening in the world today. I mean, we there's a housing shortage. So typically for our timeline to get a, you know, someone like Isabella moved along and outside of the shelter, it's taking a lot longer these days. Um, so we have, you know, other factors out of our, our control in the way we uh, do business as well. But um, as long as uh, she is present and is sticking to her goals and at least what her plans are with the resources that we're offering her, I think she'll be all right. You know, you're doing a wonderful job of describing, as is Dr. Rodriguez, how resilient and, and what capabilities Isabella has. But what you didn't say there was, you're the resource right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that you're the one who has to save her from everything or make everything happen, but just that the moments where she actually can look you in the eye and see that you're there and you care about her. You probably don't even think about that because it's just so natural. But I wonder, you know, Dr. Chang, as, as her therapist, how important do you think that might be, for example, when Isabella is preparing to go to bed at night, if someone like Anna were to just take a few minutes and just sit with her and maybe talk about things that don't seem to have any particular importance, or maybe they do, but make that kind of contact and just let her know that they're there and they care about her. Do you think that might be something that would be helpful? That's definitely super important. And you know, Anna, I am familiar with the shelter that, um, um, and I truly am super impressed with the services that your shelter provides. So for that, thank you, because you're making such a difference in uh, Isabella's life, but I know other young women's lives. And Isabella, you know, she really, um, craves for the type type of connections, right? Like Hilda, you know it. Um, she, um, and she really also helps you to co-regulate at times. I don't know if you had seen her, but you know, when she's calm, she's, um, she's smart, she's, she has this charm, she's sweet, right? And kind, and she, she definitely is one of um, these girls who, um, who with, the, that, who with the right support, she will, just like you're saying, she will move forward. And um, definitely, Julian, I agree with you that those contacts that do not have to be long contacts can really help her to come down, to feel connected, and um, to proactively, to hopefully, you know, with, with a little bit more practice, um, decrease the number of nightmares that she's experiencing right now. I wonder if she might have, and I ask all of you, if she might not have had a lot of experiences of really being seen by someone who sees her mm -hmm. and truly mm -hmm. values the person that they see. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that was very important even in today's session. Exactly. And I was trying today to tell heard and you know many times I see you Isabella mm, mm. I see you. Mm, what a wonderful thing you know we don't we, we don't suggest that you just take phrases and throw them in randomly but maybe for Isabella once in a while when you really do see her that might be a wonderful thing to share with her maybe you already do that Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those are some strategies that we uh, we definitely use um, at the shelter. Is um, because it it could be um, very jarring for someone, and as I mentioned earlier, in a new space with absolutely no one you know, and you're there because it's safe, and you're there because it's going to provide shelter, food, and other resources. Um, but it's, I'm sure it's scary, it's scary at times. So I think those words of affirmation are very important in my line of work, um, especially to let them know that they are seen and they are heard and they are cared for. Um, and they're just not a number. 
Yeah. I'm sorry that the only thing I could suggest then is something you already are doing. <laughs> That's all right. I but, can learn more. No, but it's sometimes we do things like that and don't even realize the incredible power and benefit of that. So I hope that that's something that you'll take away from this session. How much you, your colleagues, how much we appreciate that you do that. And you don't let Isabella just go through life and in the shelter, in and out, unseen and un, unrespected. Also, Joanne caught two things that you didn't miss on Hilda, but you kind of went over them pretty fast. And the first one was, that you had a dysregulated kid, you had a highly dysregulated person in your office. And whenever, especially with trainees, when that happens, they consider that if it's staff, that happens, it's a failure. I fell and I messed the kid up. And what you showed is that, no, it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's this huge myth in the trauma world that talking about your trauma is, is what makes you better. I think that's complete BS. Talking about your trauma while being regulated, while having a trusted person you can share it to, you know, being heard, being recognized, the opposite of being traumatized. That's what starts getting you better. And so you provided an opportunity that, you know, with a less experienced clinician would have been seen as a failure by the clinician and saying, hey, you talked about it, you thought you broke, and you didn't. And you can do it again, just like you had a nightmare kid, you're still here in the shelter and we still got, you know, Miss Anna still's got you. And that's the first we thing. We didn't I, fail. Yeah. You didn't fail. Yeah. And second thing you scoffed over is doing all that is a lot on a clinician. So how are you doing? Mm. Hmm. Um, Take a breath and use some of your breathing. <laughs> <laughs> now the we need to practice what we preach. So um, all days I need to, you know, practice some self-care strategies. Some days I have, I have no, you know, at the, can, the, the, the time that I want it, but I can practice briefly self-care strategies for this day, but other days, when I have more time, you know, I could take care of myself, you know, and uh, going outside and um, I love, you know, the nature. Always the nature have uh, some power over me to, you know, compound myself mm -hmm. in some, some manner. Also for me, um, listening to music is powerful too. So this is something that I could do driving. So um, also is important choose the kind of music because you know not death metal. Right? No, nah, <laughs> probably not. Unless that's relaxing. For exactly. You. No, but um, absolutely we need to be um, aware aware about uh, all of the energy, all of the, um, the, the, the energy that, you know, we use during the psychotherapy process. And also we need to see ourselves too. So we need to practice what we preach. So we need to um, practice real self-care strategies to, you know, um, all days I was trying to be the um, uh, mindful therapies. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be present and I need to be present with my clients. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's hard because Absolutely. sometimes we don't have enough time between one client to another. So we need some time to, to take 10 minutes to take some tea or make, you know, some deep breath, see some significant picture to us, sometimes also, I... I think you also, when you told this, Julian, that, you know, all of those I agree with, you did even a higher level move is in the moment, you, I think we use this metaphor of being stuck with trauma, mm -hmm. which I think is a pretty accurate one, and you didn't, you let the loop close, you were, like my clinicians will ask me, well, what if you, what happens if you want to cry in a session? I wouldn't cry. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you stop that? That's a very organic, mm -hmm. natural reaction, and from at least the way you described it, it wasn't there, 
you let that happen. When you, when she was sad, you were sad. When she was heartbroken, you were heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm suspecting that's what got through to this mm -hmm. to this person. I'm um, also suspecting that's probably your style, Miss Anna, too. It's like when you feel feel it, you let you don't know, stuff it down. Which also wish we could clone you for you know you know case managers. If you if you can be cloned, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, but that you know you metabolized it. You didn't stop it. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you're taking some of that in right now as we talk. Are you, are you getting a little bit of refueling and affirmation from your colleagues here? Mm-hmm. Is this a tape that you might be able to play back in your mind? It's, we're not singing, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not music, but maybe there is some music in the affirmation and the respect that I'm hearing from our colleagues for what you're doing with Isabella, how much you're, you're showing us. Yeah. You're going to take that with you as well? Yes. And not just go back and go on to work and say, well, I did the case conference and now I'm done and that's good. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're part of the resource for you too. Yes. I have something and I share today with Isabella. Ah. Sometimes I need to have my, you know, important quotes for me or reaffirmations or mm -hmm. powerful words that someone share with me someday. So sometimes I sing, Julian, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in Spanish. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, I love some music in English too, but sometimes I need to, you know, go back to my native language. As you said, go to the core. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So uh, other time um, I pray too. So more like contemplative moment for me. But also, sometimes I need something concrete. There's that so, sensory exactly. part. Exactly. Yeah, something and to hold on to. What have you got? Exactly. You got something for us? <laughs> nah, yeah. <laughs> uh, here oh. I have my, a, a kind of wooden um, coin or token. Mm. So one day I was in a kind of therapy process and an uh, and, uh, excellent clinician told me. So right on write on it something that you want to keep with you. Mm -hmm. And I was, oh, okay, I'm not ready today. So, okay, kept to you, go to your house and, you know, work on it. So I choose this phrase, un día a la vez, mm -hmm. one day at a time mm -hmm. in English, mm -hmm. because <laughs> all days I need to remind me that I, I, w I was in contact with all of this kind of suffering. Mm -hmm. So, and it was really important to me, connect with my clients, be present with all of them. So sometimes at the end of the day, I need to sit here and talk to myself and says, one day at a time, mm -hmm. maybe today, not all the session going in the way that you are expected, but tomorrow is a new opportunity to you. So today, I will share one of this with with Isabella. Oh, and did you today? Yes, oh, and I how perfect for her. Yeah, and I write in that one side my words to her. Um, I I was request Isabella, uh, please write on this side something to honor Marta's life. Uh -huh. So because I know how caring, how supportive Marta was with Isabella. So this is something also to honor mm -hmm. Marta's life and provide to Isabella the opportunity to keep something in a concretely manner with her from Marta. So something that could support her. Keeps that relationship alive in her heart. Exactly. But she can feel it. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. and what, what was her reaction when you shared that with her? I think that at first she was surprised, but then it was in a positive manner because mm -hmm. it was, oh, wow. And, you know, I was trying to, you know, be creative. I know she's really, really creative. And I said, be creative. Draw something or write down something 
that, you know, remind you that Marta always support you in whatever way. You just taught us all something very important about doing grief work, because you mentioned that Isabella has had so many losses, mm -hmm. and I guess Marta is a very important, her relationship with Marta is a very important one of those. And you just showed us how you can't give her advice that will tell her, oh, well, just get over it, just forget about Marta. She's not going to forget about Marta if she cared about Marta. But you also aren't telling her, well, you know, just think about her all the time and let that just completely take you, overtake you. But a wonderful way to be able to grieve, but Thank by you. honoring. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And to contain the grief rather than to just have it sort of flooding in. We'll have to, you'll have to be the judge, Anna, but it would be very interesting as Isabella comes back over the next few days. I wouldn't expect that even though she's obviously had a very powerful session with Dr. Rodriguez, I wouldn't expect that she's going to be all, you know, no problem with sleep, everything's fine. But it might be really interesting to see if, you know, as she goes to sleep, do you, do you or other staff notice, does she pull out that coin? Mm -hmm. Does she seem to be a little bit more able to face that moment of aloneness when you're going to bed and you're going to sleep and all you have are the thoughts and the memories? This could be the beginning of something very important that could be a part of how we can help you doing the amazing 24-7 job that you do. Yeah, I agree. I think we can also build upon that and bring it to the home and have that be an activity that we do with others as well. Wonderful. Because, um, you know, everyone is grieving in their own way, and what a beautiful way to honor something so special. And I think that's something that we can put out there as an activity that's creative and everyone can do in their own way. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Thank that was you. was beautiful. Thank you. You reminded me about, you know, different cultures have different ways of grieving mm. and celebrating Marta's life by thinking about her in one positive thought and keeping her, oh, that speaks to Latinos. And I'm pretty sure that it speaks to other cultures too in terms of But it of may have special honoring. meaning. Yes, yes, so yeah. Thank you for doing that. That was mm. really so that creative. I'm sure that it truly resonated with Isabella. Yeah. I have one more, one more tough part to talk about, if it's all right. And that is that you, know, you told us that as, as far as you could see, Isabella had a pretty intense flashback. Mm -hmm. So she was really scared. And you, being a, a, a very skilled trauma therapist, I'm, I know that you helped her th recognize that that's a, a reaction to what she's been through. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is or could be most helpful for Isabella so that she doesn't have to fear those kinds of reactions in the future? Because we, we both know, we all know, there are going to be other triggers. There's yes. no way to avoid mm -hmm. them. We can do our best. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the triggers are happy things, so it's not just bad things. What do you think or what have you seen that might be helpful for Isabella so she's not afraid of her own reactions? At first, I was trying to, you know, psychoeducate her about the triggers, about the trauma reminders. Um, you know, also I was explained that unfortunately, um, I strongly expected that more triggers. She, she will have more triggers. So um, she expressed to me that maybe she was a little bit afraid because she lose her, her self, uh, sense of control of herself. Mm -hmm. So I validated and I trying to um, reframing this in that mm -hmm. way. I was trying to, Isabella, the the this kind of um, trauma reminders are tied absolutely are tied with a traumatic event mm -hmm. but also our body has a memory mm -hmm. a me a, has a, a memory about the the this loving and care person mm -hmm. 
Mm, so oh, sometimes I see. the other side the coin uh, I mean. <laughs> exactly so the trauma reminders have the both sides in some way they're tied with the 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 person of the you know the 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 person that she lose mm. so in some way i was uh, trying to explain her and we are working on it you know but we begin today mm -hmm. so you sometimes you have this kind of experience because your body are reacting to the memories mm -hmm. but not just to the traumatic memories this is one of the one of the side of the situation you also have your memories your loving memories mm. with someone that you love that you care a lot so your body it's receiving another kind of sign or signal mm. or you know to communicate that you are safe mm -hmm. that communicate that you are loved that you are support so mm. we are trying to start to begin work in in that way you know um, um I, love, I love that so much you know the, and uh, one of my colleagues says calls that process the process of turning ghosts into ancestors mm -hmm. oh that's so beautiful yes. yeah. ghosts Some, scare us ancestors yes. care for us wow someone much smarter than me came up with that <laughs> wow Shanks, huh? but I appreciate that oh. but yeah and it sounds like you're going I think that's a key thing that gets missing grief work is Let's get, especially, in, I'm just gonna, you know, you know, beat up my own discipline for a second, is in clinical psych, it's like, well, it's a pathology, it's a symptom, it's a, dia. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying it's not painful, it obviously was and is, but there's the good too, You're, like we can't throw it all away. And I, and I, I think that's just such a brilliant and, and insightful tactic that you're taking and, and so honoring of, of Isabella. And I know it gets lost a lot in especially grief work. Um, and so I think you're, you're doing a great job of beginning to turn ghosts into ancestors. I guess if the body remembers mm -hmm. those things, then mm -hmm. it was real. if she can help her body remember the love and caring, exactly. then her body doesn't have to just remember the shock and the trauma. Mm -hmm. Maybe the two mm -hmm. coexist and it's not easy. You can't get rid of one, but maybe you can begin to actually help your body. Oh, that's, that is so lovely. That really is. That's, yes. Maybe that's how superheroes heal because <laughs> I thought they were just invulnerable, but I guess maybe they, they have the power to convert or translate the pain into something that is actually really life -giving. Having read more comics than any adult man should, really, and I would agree with that. <laughs> uh, also, uh, as you know, for the human being process, we need to create a space, an inner space for both of, of the kind of memory. So we have a space for the, you know, happy memories, the good days and, you know, but also we need, o sea, I cannot give an Isabella an eraser to mm -hmm. erase the traumatic memory. So mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to help her to integrate this, mm -hmm so sad, so hard memory with Marta with the other memories with her too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So validating all of their emotion, her emotions, validating how hard it could be because mm -hmm. I'm not in her shoes. I just could imagine mm -hmm. how hard it could be for her. But this is something that I was trying to to work with her so you mm -hmm. how she could integrate the two kinds of memory that the good ones the meaningful ones but also you know the 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 sad the the traumatic the those ones that we don't have to you know recall or remind but we need to learn to live with them and and now we're praying to. I've heard, I've heard that sometimes referred to as being able to hold both the reactive and also the main. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't think That's of so where true. that comes from. I cannot think probably. about it either. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so important, that dialectic, mm -hmm. and to make space for both. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you're clearly helping us make a lot of space for seeing how 
although we all need to be concerned about Isabella, and she's got a tough road ahead, and she won't be able to stay in the shelter forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's just inspiring to know that there are people like you, Miss Anna, who Thank are you. looking out for her and helping her start to create that road. That's another dialectic. There's the scary future, and there's the future where Isabella has um, such amazing potential. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe this is the time where she finally gets to break away from the kinds of relationships that have not been good for her. Yes, I imagine, be. Dr. Chang, you, you were working with her on that from many years ago. Yeah, and I think that now is the opportunity. I mean, I think that unfortunately she's facing a super tragedy. And at the same time, you know, being a place where she feels safe, Anna, that's really mm -hmm. super important for her and um, in her recovery and having you, Hilda, I'm actually super grateful for that too. And Anna, I hope that you know that you have in Hilda and in us a support. Yes. Please count on us. We'll be happy to talk to you. And thank you for all the work. And Hilda, we're here also for you. Thank Definitely. you. Thank you. If you can't find a stress ball, you can find us. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be looking for you too. Yes. Wow. Thank you all. And thank you, Hilda, for sharing so much with us. Thank you to and all. And Anna for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate your partnership and colleagues, Michael and Rocio. Thank you.